So, Zatoichi, the blind samurai, is an old character, and there's a lot of movies about him. He's been mainly portrayed by uh, Shintaro Katsu. Anyway, there's over 20 movies of Zatoichi, and a friend of mine bought all of them and was watching them, and was completely caught off guard by number 24, and I'm going to read a synopsis that he wrote um, that he felt like he had to write because he was so deeply disturbed with what he had seen. And he sent it to me and I, I thought I needed to record it and try to explain to you guys the misery and confusion that is Zatoichi in Desperation. Okay. I have no idea where to post this essay, and I need to vent this, so this place is as good as any. Zatoichi in Desperation, 1972, the 24th of 26 original Zatoichi films, is single-handedly the most brutal, depressingly miserable film I have ever seen in my entire life. I say this with zero hyperbole and having seen Melancholia, Antichrist, The Deer Hunter, Hardcore, Salo, Cannibal Holocaust, Synecdoc, Synecdoche, and countless misanthropic, bleak, callous horror films, it's fair to say I have some bearing on what constitutes a miserable film. For context, a Zatoichi film, for the most part, follows the general formula of Zatoichi, a blind Yakuza with low-level supernatural senses and phenomenal sword skills, wandering into a new town, village, city, and experiencing some sort of injustice caused by the local government, the Yakuza, or both, and working towards correcting said injustice, usually at a personal cost. It is often a bittersweet victory, but still a heroic tale with humor sprinkled throughout. Zatoichi in desperation goes, Fuck that. <gasps> Fuck all of that. <gasps> Fuck every single bit of that. The film begins with Zatoichi cautiously crossing a very dilapidated rope bridge. And halfway across the bridge, he crosses paths with an elderly woman playing a shamisen, that atonal Japanese banjo. And she warns him to be careful on the bridge, as it has many gaps and missing planks. They talk briefly, and she explains that she's going to visit her daughter, who works at a brothel. As both are about to part ways, Zatoichi offers the woman some money for her playing. This causes her to get excited, and she carelessly rushes to take the money and falls into a gap. <laughs> Zatoichi, being blind, isn't quite sure what has happened, and he's unable to help her as she's clinging for dear life before falling to her death in the river below, leaving behind the shamisen. He recovers the shamisen, which has the old woman's name written on it. He doesn't currently know this. <laughs> he doesn't currently know this, but it's how he's able to find the woman's daughter, and decides to head in the direction the woman was traveling in an attempt to find and make amends with her daughter. I'll spare you a complete synopsis and just explain the core characters of the film and what happens to them. First, the local Yakuza. This gang is completely irredeemable and loathsome to the core, which will become clear shortly, and is exceptionally cruel compared to every antagonistic group in the previous 23 films. In addition to the standard fare of running a brothel and gambling house, they control the fishing in the coastal village in which the film is set. Their goal is to set up a monopoly on fishing by destroying the boats of every independent fisherman and murdering anyone who tries to stop them. New character. The old woman's daughter. Unlike many of the prostitutes we've encountered in previous films, this woman is completely jaded, doesn't really care that her mother is dead, nor does she care that Zatuichi pays off her debt to the brothel. She even helps betray Zatuichi tries to get him drunk and sleep with him so that the Yakuza can ambush him in a compromised position. 
That plan doesn't work, and Zatoichi kills a great deal of them in the ambush. But he mistakenly believes she's been kidnapped, so he tracks her down to a Yakuza-owned whaling boat, where he is inevitably trapped. It is on this boat we experience the worst thing to ever happen to Zatoichi. We watch in full gory detail as the Yakuza meticulously impale his hands with whaling harpoons. Jesus. In past films, he's been shot twice, beaten numerous times, taken a lashing, stabbed, sliced up by swords, lit on fire, pelted with rocks. But this is by far the most brutal thing done to him. All in vain to save a woman whose storyline distracted him from the following tragic characters. The retarded young man. Um, <laughs> so, this is by far the worst part. We're going to change that to the very special young man, okay? So, the very special young man. We are first introduced to this character by him discovering and not fully understanding that his uncle and primary caregiver has just hung himself after the Yakuza destroyed his livelihood. Left to wander on his own, the mentally disabled young man eventually encounters a group of Yakuza enforcers who proceed to pin him to the ground while one of them by job while mocking him. Close brackets. This was a massive what the fuck moment, as nothing remotely close to this has happened in any of the previous films, which for the most part are relatively wholesome. The young man involuntarily ejaculates on the man sexually assaulting him, which angers him. More closed brackets. I'm at a loss here myself just typing this out, explaining what happens. He then proceeds to brutally beat the young man. This character barely interacts with Zatoichi, as they only cross paths once, while on the beach, and being blind, Zatoichi cannot understand the young man's peculiar behavior. Next character is Little Boy. One of the first people Zatoichi encounters in the village. He helps direct Zatoichi towards the brothel, where his 14-year-old sister is also working as a cook, maid, server. Specifically not a prostitute at this point in the story. Uh, as a means to support them as their parents had died. The little boy later throws a rock at one of the Yakuza enforcers while they are harassing the villagers after setting their boats on fire, preventing them from extinguishing the flames. The enforcer proceeds to ruthlessly beat the little boy with his sheathed sword, leaving him to die in the sand. Fourteen-year-old girl. She initially works at the brothel as a server to earn a living to feed her and her little brother, but is eventually forced into prostitution when a quote-unquote creepy pedo government magistrate who is working with the Yakuza to establish their monopoly takes an interest in her. Fortunately, before she can become the victim of forced <laughs> she learns of the death of her little brother and flees to the funeral for the villagers killed by the Yakuza the previous day. She takes his body from its casket, which nobody had claimed and walks into the sea holding his body in her arms, drowning herself. She barely had exchanged words with Zatoichi when they met at the brothel. In a normal Zatoichi movie, these tragic characters would all have been protected by him, while some jaded prostitute wouldn't have come up on his radar. I guess the point of the movie was that while trying to correct a wrong he was only partially responsible for, Zatoichi missed the far greater injustices happening all around him. It's rather... It's rather unfortunate that Zatoichi doling out justice by killing the Yakuza isn't even particularly satisfying either, as he was severely wounded the night before by the previously mentioned impalement of his hands. He's left having to fight with a major disadvantage, his sword bound between his two hands lending itself to a rather awkward fight sequence. The film ends with Zatoichi disregarding the old woman's daughter, 
maimed, hobbling along the beach, dripping blood, miserable. <laughs>